how involved are you with the show? No, I was inv I was involved in the beginning and with the pilot. I went out for the filming of the pilot with my daughter, who is now uh, nearly 20. And at the time, she was the exact same age. In fact, shares a birthday with one of the three um, stars of Just Add Magic. So uh, she and I go out with another one of my girlfriends and we are we're there. We're in like little director chairs. We got the earphone things on. They're like, take one. And we are physically there. Um, but not providing input it's, it's more of a courtesy and a th thrill um to see all of these people right there's craft services the food people and directors and actors and makeup and costume all working to execute something that was once in my head uh, it was really a, really an amazing experience and i'm so appreciative that I was welcome to be there to attend the filming of that pilot um, it was very cool. And I was still working, by the way, at my company at the time. So I'm out in L.A. taking pictures like of being on set, sending it to people who were in conference room meetings and say, look where I am. Um, so it was, it's very cool uh, to see it all come to life. And I am so grateful and appreciative to everyone and everything Amazon Studios did to support the project. I'm always curious because uh, I have I've unfortunately not yet had uh, that that experience, although it's a bucket list item. So Amazon, if you're listening, there's books available. Go check them out. <laughs> um, but ju just you and me talking, for, forget, forget anybody else who might be listening. When you're there and on set and you're looking at all those things that, that sprang uh, initially from your imagination and now other people are involved, is there ever a moment where well, I didn't imagine it that way? Let me let me tell you how to change just this one or two little things here. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, there's definitely things that I in, that were inconsistent with my vision, but and that wasn't always easy to swallow. Um, which was a learning experience for me. And I think I've matured in, in that regard a lot since that time. Um, but I did know, and my film, I had a wonderful film agent, I still do, that was cheering me on from the sidelines saying, this is how it works and it's it's gonna be great. And it and it was great. Um, and I don't say that the, the book or the, or the screen, like one is necessarily better, than the other they're they're different they're different ex executions and that's been a huge learning for me is the way that something's executed on paper versus on screen is different um and i would have benefited from sort of studying that in in school decades earlier but it was something i learned more hands-on um and now i have a much better appreciation for Gotcha. So you're just kind of biting your tongue while that happens and then learning to appreciate later. Yeah, yeah, uh, absolutely. But well said. OK, you can't you can't pull a child actress aside and say, no, say it this way. <laughs> yep. I'm ha by the way, having similar. So this is now years and years and years later, I work on um, audio books for some of my books and I I read I'm working on a project right now and I, I hear it. I hear the voices in my head in a certain way. And when I listen to the audio book different, and it's different than what I heard, it takes me a minute to say, you know what, that's pretty good. Like it's different, but it's still good. Um, and so I'm still having the same experience even though it's many years later. That was an experience I had also was wanting to tell the audiobook narrator, no, say it this way, and then stopping myself, like, nope, let them express themselves. This will be a, it'll be, it'll be a better reading if they're able to do it within reason uh, with their interpretation. And then there are moments where like, they do such a good job, like, oh, I'm a better writer than I thought I was. Oh, fantastic. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. Um. So how, in a practical sense, once uh, the you know there are billboards all over uh, the place that are advertising just add magic, uh, you're you're world famous um, uh, in in some respects. Uh, and if you're not, well, this 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 episode's about to go live. You will be. <laughs> yeah. so, how does having that experience of, of of everybody knowing about what was initially just just you and your book? How does that change things for you? How does that change? Does that change the way you look at your fiction, knowing that this might also one day be a show or a movie? Or um, for sure, I mean, I, I always think when I was writing a project, 
I always had that in mind. But once that door is just cracked open, um, it did the success of, of Just Add Magic has provided an entree for me to meet with other people and other companies. Um, before the pandemic, about once a year, once every 18 months, my agent would sort of arrange a road show for me. So I would go to LA and I would meet with for maybe four or five days, several different companies um, or executives. And I think it, it helps to get those, to get the, my foot in the door with the success of Just Add Magic um, taking the lead. And even now I can send a, you know, cold call email to someone um, who I might, you know, have, have seen their, their work or something they've directed or produced. Um, and I can send an email and with being able to put, you know, Emmy nominated Just Add Magic um, in the first line, I think helps give me some credibility. I was on, just backing up to the road shows, it was on one of those road shows that I was pitching uh, my work and um, that's when uh, saltwater secrets which at the time had a different title um was pitched to a company and the book hadn't i hadn't finished writing the book yet and that book was optioned before i had finished writing it as a, a byproduct of one of those road shows that i'd been on well that's outstanding very exciting um when you come in and you're you're you know you're just at magic that's that's your that's your street cred uh, if you want to pitch them for an adult mystery or, I don't know, a, a psycho slasher horror movie, I don't know what you're pitching. <laughs> does that does that extend or do they want to see something else? Give us more uh, middle grade. Give us more children's type story. Type no, I, go, I go in as, you know, self-branded myself, um, queen of tween. Um, and it wouldn't be the right person that wouldn't, it, the same executive would and take a pitch for something tween and also for a slasher that's probably a different different team different department but children, kids and family and adult are generally different people um so i have only pitched my my younger ideas 